Happy Sunday, church family. We're so grateful that you chose to be with us today. Come on with some gratitude for what Jesus has brought us through. Can we worship him together? Cause no longer I who live, but Christ in me. For I've been born again. My heart is free. The hope of heaven before me. The grave behind. Hallelujah. You brought me back to life. Amen. Amen. We sing, I won't forget. Oh, I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name. Out of the grip of darkness into the light of grace. And just like Lazarus. You brought me back to life And where there was dead religion And now there is living faith All of my hope and freedom I found in Jesus' name
everything on purpose And I can feel your spirit stirring I've been praying, you've been working Working it all for good Come on, Romans 8, 28 So fan the flame and keep it burning Refining in the furnace And all the waiting will be worth it Cause you're working it all for good Come on, you believe that? Miracle after miracle Open door after open door
what a special time of worship and praise we have just had together. Thank you so much for joining us at Life Changers Online. My name is Liv and I'm so thrilled that you're here. You were meant to be here today with me, with our online church family, with our hosts that are there to enjoy this experience with you as well. And if it is your first time, definitely click the link that our team is sharing with you now because we have a gift that we'd love to send you this week in the mail just as a way of saying thank you. So jump on that. And coming up shortly, our pastor, Gregory Dickow, is bringing the word, which I know will encourage us and inspire us as we navigate this daily wonderful journey of exploring a life of just accepting all the goodness that God has for us and being happy and perfect people, which is our mantra here. And um, so in this moment and at every time in our that we gather, we just always want to take a second to express our gratitude for you our, the generosity of so many in our church and we also just want to always ensure that we have an opportunity to express our gratitude through our generosity to our wonderful Heavenly Father and thank you for trusting this church with your tithes which is 10% of your income and your offerings thank you for believing in the vision here that we are going to continue to reach people with the real Jesus who wants to bless us in the midst of hard times and comfort us in the midst of our pain and you know you might see ways that you can be a part of this moment of generosity on your screen now and just know that we're so thankful and I want to encourage you that God's loving kindness is what reaches people not judgment not anger not uh, I don't know uh, judgments probably the word like we look at people we have our opinions we need to let all that go that doesn't reach people God's goodness and mercy and favor and forgiveness and compassion that is what we walk out and that is what draws people to him and that's what we get to have as his kids and so we don't you know, he doesn't need anything from us, but he wants to give blessing and provision to you. The Bible says he's the supplier of everything we need in Philippians 4.19. And in the message it says, you can be sure that God will take care of everything you need, his generosity exceeding even yours in the glory that pours out from Jesus. Isn't that so awesome? And when we trust him with our seed, we're exercising our faith that with this gift, with this donation, with this a seed, as I've said, God is going to use it. And we're going to be in a position to reach more people because of your generosity. And then your trust and all of that, uh, I don't know, that leaning on Jesus in your generosity, it makes a way for what you're believing for to come to pass. And he is going to take care of, as that scripture says, everything. Heck yes. So let's just pray together right now in this moment. Father, we just thank you that we can lean on you. You are the supplier of what we need. You provide what we're hoping for. You fill the gap in our lives. And I just speak provision and favor and awesome, uh, just open doors. And everyone's uh, life and journey that's listening right now, we bless this seed. We think that you will empower us as a church to reach more people with the real love of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Well, you're the best. Thank you so much for being a part of our online squad today. I know you're ready for the word from our pastor, Gregory Dickow. I'm ready, so let's lock in, and I'll see you on the other side. Well, welcome to Life Changers International Church. And from wherever you're watching, I want to welcome you. I want to pray for you. I want to believe with you. I want to believe with you for a move of God in your life, a revival in your life coming back to life, whatever's been dead, whatever's been broken, whatever's been damaged, whatever's been wounded. You see, all of God's purpose in your life starts with having an intimate relationship with him. And no matter what you've done or where you've been, today is the today is the day. Today is the first day of your great intimate relationship with God. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that every person has the right to come boldly to the throne of your grace, to receive mercy and grace and to fellowship with you there, Father, to experience your presence, to experience your power, to experience your purpose for our lives. I pray that every person who feels far away will draw near and every person who feels close will draw closer and every person who feels they're disqualified will still come closer to you because of the blood of Jesus that qualifies all of us to have an intimate relationship with you. Heal, restore, recreate, 
revive every person within the sound of my voice today in Jesus name. Amen. Now, I want to talk to you about that intimacy with God, the revival that is stirring, the revival that is stirring inside of you, the revival that is stirring in the nations. It's a revival of intimacy with God. There will be power and there will be praise and there will be signs and wonders. But the greatest revival is a revival of closeness, a revival of intimacy with Jesus. You see, everything good begins and ends with intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy with him is the alpha and the omega. It's all about the union and the unity between you and Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit living inside of us and the church, the body of Christ. Behold, Jesus said in Revelation, chapter three, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Think about that. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. Anyone that means the sinner or the saint, the high or the low, the great or the small. Boy, I hope you get a hold of that, that it's not reserved for the holy and the few. It's available to everybody, anybody. If anyone hears my voice, Jesus said and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Do you see the intimacy there? And it's for anyone who hears his voice and opens the door in Mark 1 11, We hear the voice of God in Jesus life. It's the voice of love and delight. One translation says, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. You are my dearly loved son. The father speaks to Jesus before he's done a miracle before he's healed the sick, before he's preached a sermon, before he's done the Sermon on the Mount, before he's fed the multitudes, before he's raised the dead, before he dies for our sins and rises from the dead, before any of it, the father speaks out of heaven. You are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. You know, God is so happy when you simply believe him, because, you know, sometimes I wonder, God, am I really pleasing to you? And he says to me, son, you believe in someone that you've never seen before. You believe and pray to someone you've never seen before. You build your whole life upon someone you've never seen before. Of course, it brings me joy that you believe. Of course, you're pleasing to me. You know what you're doing? Just believe in God. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who seek him, not those who see him, but those who seek him. We'll see him one day in heaven. We may not see him on this earth, but we will see him in heaven. And it's not about seeing him where our faith lies. It's about seeking him. He says, whoever comes to me and believes. That I am, do you believe that he is today and he's the rewarder of those who seek him? You see, intimacy with Jesus is not a chore. Intimacy with Jesus is not a requirement. Uh, Intimacy with Jesus is not something God demands, but it's something he desires. And if we would stop looking at God as a demander and start looking at him as a desirer, he desires you. He he loves you and he desires you. Well, I pray that that would open up your heart. I pray today that you would have an encounter with Jesus, unlike any other encounter you've ever had before, that you would be filled in your heart and mind and body with his beauty, with his love, with his humility, with his gratitude, with his smile, with his peace, with his pleasure, with his happiness in you. Yes, because you believe. God is pleased with you. I love what Jesus tells us and the intimate relationship he offers to us and invites us to in Matthew chapter 11. And I want to read to you from the Message Bible and beginning in verse 25, it's so powerful. It says abruptly, Jesus broke into prayer and said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, he abruptly 
broke into prayer. You know, you may be facing all sorts of problems and mountains and bills and sicknesses and relationship issues and fear and worry and anxiety in your life. You know what to do in those moments? Abruptly break through with prayer. Don't wait for the right moment. Don't wait for things to be resolved. Don't wait for things to get cleaned up abruptly. Jesus broke into prayer abruptly break into prayer. Just say, Father, I believe you. Father, I thank you. Father, I love you. Father, I trust you. I mean, break out into that prayer anytime abruptly driving down the road in your car, abruptly break into prayer, abruptly call on God, abruptly worship him, abruptly thank him, abruptly praise him. But Jesus goes on to say, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. You've concealed your ways from the sophisticates, from the know it alls, and you spelled them out clearly to ordinary people like you and me. Yes, Father, Jesus said, that's the way you like to work. Verse 27, Jesus resumed. Jesus resumed talking to the people because he was talking to the father and so can you. But Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. I love how it says in this version, but now tenderly. And he says, the father has given me these things to do and say, this is a unique father son operation coming out of the father and son intimacies and knowledge. In other words, everything that God wants to do in your life, the world transforming your life, changing your increase, experiencing your family, salvation, encountering all of these things come out of an intimacy with God. Jesus says all of the things in your kingdom, Father, comes out of the father, son intimacies and knowledge. You know, you are now a part. You're invited by Jesus to be a part of the father, son intimacies. Jesus goes on to say, no one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. Jesus said, but I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. And what does he have to say to start out this intimacy? Verse 28, he goes on to say to show us the way to intimacy. Are you tired? Guess what? <laughs> tired is one of the prerequisites for intimacy with God. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? These are the prerequisites for intimacy with God. And of course, intimacy with God is for anybody. But he says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out? on religion. Jesus says, come to me, a person, come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. This is revival. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. He says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. He says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill fitting on you. Keep company with me. You know, you are starting a new company. I don't, I don't know if you knew this, but each and every one of you can start a new company. You know what it is? A company with Jesus. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Whew, what a promise. What a series of promises. I mean, we could go on endlessly about these promises of rest, about these promises of intimacy, about these promises of knowledge, about these promises of knowing the father the way the son does and knowing the son the way the father does. We get to experience that. He said, I'm not keeping it to myself. It's available to you and to me. I want you to consider for a moment the kind of man that is inviting you to come find rest. I want you to consider for a moment what kind of man stands at the door and knocks. Who is this man? Song of Solomon tells us what this man is like. I want you to know what kind of man it is that invites you to this kind of intimacy with him. And this is for man and woman and child, whether you're old, whether you're young, whether you're new in the faith or not yet in the faith. This is the man standing at the door and knocking Song of Solomon, chapter five, verse 10 through 16 in the Passion Translation. He alone is my beloved. He shines in dazzling splendor, yet is still so approachable. 
without equal as he stands above all others, outstanding among 10,000. The way he leads me is divine. His leadership so pure and dignified as he wears his crown of gold. Upon this crown are letters of black written on a background of glory. He sees everything with pure understanding. How beautiful are his insights without distortion, the scripture says. It goes on to say his eyes rest upon the fullness of the river of revelation flowing so clean and so pure. Looking at his gentle face, I see such fullness of emotion like a lovely garden where fragrant spices grow. What a man! The scripture says about Jesus, no one speaks words so anointed as this one, words that both pierce and heal, words like lilies dripping with myrrh. See how his hands hold unlimited power, but he never uses it in anger, for he is always holy, displaying his glory. The scripture goes on to say his innermost place is a work of art so beautiful and bright. How magnificent and noble is this one covered in majesty. This is your Jesus. This is my Jesus. He's steadfast in all that he does. His ways are the ways of righteousness based on truth and holiness. None can rival him, but all will be amazed by him. Most sweet are his kisses, even his whispers of love. He is delightful in every way and perfect from every viewpoint. If you ask me why I love him, The scripture goes on to say, O brides to be, it's because there is none like him to me. Everything about him fills me with holy desire. And now he is my beloved, my friend forever. Woo! What a what a savior. You see now the kind of man that invites you to intimacy with him. I want to show you and talk about how to experience this intimacy with him. But you can't experience this the way God intends until you see him for who he really is. Now, we're not going to see him in all of his glory, but even just a glimpse of his glory that we just read about in Song of Solomon, a glimpse of Jesus face, a glimpse of his beauty would make us run to a savior like him, would make us get on the Concord and get, the, get those engines fired up again that used to go the, the speed of, of sound and get to the other side and find him, run to him, get a train to him, a plane to him, be transported to him. But everything inside of you will want to come to him and spend time with him when you realize how beautiful and how how glorious and how strong and mighty he really is and how affectionate he is for you and tender. How do we do this? Well, as we see this proper picture of Jesus coming into our view, let us interrupt our daily life with conversation with him. The first thing each of us need to do, interrupt your daily life with conversation with him. Model how Jesus abruptly broke into prayer. And what did he say in Matthew 11, 25, when he says it says he abruptly broke into prayer? What did he say when he abruptly broke into prayer? Father, I thank you. He said, thank you, Father, Father, I thank you. You know what? No matter what's going on in your life right now, no matter where we are in this preaching in this message right now, no matter what you're doing as you're listening right now, let's abruptly go to God in prayer. Let's abruptly break into prayer. Just say this out loud. Say, thank you, Father. Say in this moment, I abruptly say, thank you, Father. Father, I thank you. Come on, say that out loud. Father, I thank you. Lift your hands to him wherever you are and say, Father, I thank you. Father, I interrupt this pain I'm going through by saying, thank you, Father. I interrupt this fear I'm feeling 
by saying, thank you, Father, I interrupt this anxiety I'm experiencing by saying, thank you, Father, I interrupt this debt I have by saying, thank you, Father, I interrupt this attack coming against my mind by saying, thank you, Father, I interrupt the boredom of my life by saying, thank you, Father, I I interrupt the temptation of my life and say, thank you, Father, I interrupt the, the 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 confusion in my life and say, thank you, Father, I interrupt the previous versions of myself and I break through in prayer and say I break out in prayer and I abruptly break into prayer and say thank you, Father. Amen. You see, this revelation of Jesus compels you to interrupt your everyday routine with conversation with God, otherwise known as prayer. But I think when we say prayer, most of us think we failed at that. We're not good at that. But you can have a conversation. I know a lot of people. Sometimes I go to the gym and I I see people that are having conversation. They might not be working out, but they sure know how to have conversation like anybody knows how to have a conversation. All you have to do is if you would just see that. Break the routine of your life, break the doldrum, break the fear, break the anxieties, break into that thing abruptly with conversation with God in the midst of your trial, break into prayer by having conversation with God in the midst of your darkness, break into prayer by having conversation with God. And what that conversation should consist of is exactly what Jesus modeled. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you. We need to abruptly interrupt our life with conversation with Jesus. And the next thing we need to do is we need to adopt a life of simplicity, you know, reflecting on Jesus. Thanks to the father. His ways are revealed to the humble and to the simple. He invites you to embrace this divine simplicity, seeking God in ordinary moments, recognizing his grace is accessible to you at all times, recognizing that he's available to you at all times, recognizing that life doesn't have to be so complicated. It can be much more simple by just letting go and breaking abruptly in the middle of anything and saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. When you see the birds flying and chirping, say thank you, Father. When you see the sun come up, Thank you, Father. When you see it go down. Thank you, Father. When you see clouds. Thank you, Father. When it rains. Thank you, Father. When it snows. Thank you, Father. When things are good. Thank you, Father. When things are bad. Thank you, Father. When things are confusing. Thank you, Father. When you don't know what to do. Thank you, Father. Abruptly interrupt your life with conversation with God. And adopt abruptly adopt. Oh, the simplicity of simply having a relationship with God through Jesus and his precious blood. We're out of time for today, but I've got more steps we can take in this intimate relationship with God. Let me pray for you, Father. I thank you that every person connected to me right now is experiencing your presence. Your presence is piercing through whatever site they're watching on, whatever platform they're watching on, wherever they're hearing this, wherever they're watching in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for those that have never met you yet. Come on, those of you that are not sure you're going to heaven when you die, pray with me this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, just pray that out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I believe Jesus died for my sin and rose from the dead. Come on, pray that out loud from this moment forward. Pray that from this moment forward, I am a child of God. Amen. It's so simple. It really is not complicated. Now, the next thing I want you to do is reach me wherever you are in the world and request this free book called The Power of a New Life. In this book, I take you step by step into the next steps in this relationship, this journey with God. It shows you the power that you have now, the power of your relationship and how to grow that relationship and how to be established in that relationship. You can download it anywhere in the world for free, absolutely free. Download the version of it that you can have with you everywhere you go, right? Online, wherever you go, go to lifechangerschurch.com 
slash salvation, lifechangerschurch.com slash salvation. There'll be a, a, a link to download this book wherever you are for free. I can't wait to pick this up right where we left off next time. Thank you for joining me at Life Changers International Church. Go and tell somebody about Jesus today. You'll never regret it. God bless.